Let's solve leak code 84 largest rectangle in histogram. So we're given a bunch of bar heights and each bar has a width of one. We wanna find out what's the largest rectangle we can get and return the area of it. So in this case, the largest has an area of 10. Width of two, height five. Another rectangle we could get has an area eight. This one has a width of four, height of two. Another one has a width of 6, height 1, so area 6. There's also other rectangles we could get, but these are a few of them. So if we just draw the first two bars, let's see if we can notice any patterns from them. So if you look at them, the first one is bigger than the second one. That means for the, this rectangle of height 2, we can't extend it any farther. Once we reach this 1, we can't extend it any farther. So the biggest rectangle we could get with height 2 is just this one right here. Because there's a little hole over here, so we can't push it any farther. But for this 1, we can push since the height is one, we can kind of extend it towards the left a little bit, right? And use the left rectangle. And since we can't extend the height two, we can still extend the height one because there's no, there's nothing coming after it that'll stop us just yet. Let's look at the opposite scenario. What would happen if the one came before the two? In this case, the one comes first, so we can keep extending it to the right. There's nothing stopping us, right? And the two, there's nothing coming after it just yet that'll stop us. So we can actually extend this height of two a little farther because there's no smaller height that comes after it. So there's no hole, right? The third case is if two rectangles were even right next to each other. In this case, we can also keep extending it, right? Because there's no hold. These rectangles are the same height. There's no smaller rectangle stopping them from being extended farther to the right. So this tells us that the current heights are going to be in increasing order because this 2 cannot be extended beyond this point. So we can only compute the area of height 2 from this width and then we have to pop it, right? We can't extend it any farther so we have to remove it from being considered so now let's look at the case where all the heights are in increasing order notice how since they're all in increasing order they can be extended to the right continuously right so this one over here can continue to be extended to the right this two can be extended to the right this three can be extended to the right and this four can be extended to the right None of them can be extended towards the left though, right? Because the height to the left is smaller, so they can't be extended to the left. But what would happen if we introduced a smaller height after? So if we introduced a three over here, that would mean that this four over here, it can't be extended any farther because there's a three coming after it. So all we can do is say, okay, these are the boundaries of height four. Let's compute the area which is gonna be four in this case because the width is one, and then we have to remove this from being considered, right? So we pop it. What if we introduced a two instead? Well, the same thing will happen. We can't extend this four any farther, right? So all we can say is these are the boundaries of it, right? It's We started back here, and then we extended all the way until we got to this two. So compute the area and then pop it, right? Let's look at this three now. We can't extend this any farther either, right? Because the two is less than the three. So we can say that these are the boundaries of the three. Let's see what the area it could have contributed was. It's six, maybe that's the max area, we don't know yet, but we know we can't extend this three any farther. So we have to pop it as well. What about this two over here? Well, since the new height that we got is also two, we can keep extending it. There's, there's no reason we can't, so we will only have to pop these two elements, the three and the four, because we can't extend them any farther because now we reached a two. Let's look at one last example to drive this point home. So now we have a one over here, right? So we can't extend the four anymore either. So we compute the area, four, and then remove it from consideration. Also this three, it can't be extended any further. So we compute the area, six, 
and then remove it from consideration. In this case, even the two can't be extended any further, right? Because the one is too small. So we compute the area, in this case, six, and then remove it from consideration. So in this case, we had a one, and then we popped three elements from consideration, right? So notice how we are popping elements and we're only popping the most recent elements. We're not popping an element that's in the middle. We're only popping them from the top to the bottom, from the most recent elements, right? So that tells us we should use a stack for this problem. So the stack will contain the current heights that, are, that we are considering and will pop them from the top when we are no longer considering them. So now let's look at the algorithm. So I have a stack and in the stack, I'm not just gonna hold the index and I'm not just gonna hold the height. I'm gonna hold both of them at the same time. So I'm holding the start index and the corresponding height. I'm also gonna be maintaining what the max area is so far. So now let's start at the beginning of the array. We get element two. So since there's nothing in the stack, we can't pop anything, let's just add it. So at, at starting at index zero, we have a height of two. Next, we get to index one. There's a height of one over here, right? So now we're gonna add the height one to our stack. But let's notice, let's look at our stack. There's a height one that's at the top of the stack right now. That means that this two, it can't be extended any farther. We reached a height that was smaller than the two. So that means we're gonna pop the two from the stack. But before we pop it, let's just see what's the max area we could have gotten with this two height. So it started at index zero, right? We can see it started at index zero and, it, and we just reached index one. So that's the range of the width from zero to one. So the width is one, the height is two. So that means the area is two. So, so far we'll say our max area is two now. And now we can pop the two from the stack. So what's the index of this one? Now, well, we're currently at index one, right? So we can say that that's the index, but I'm actually gonna do it a little differently. If you look at this two, we can actually extend this one all the way back because we just popped this two. That means this one could have been extended back by one. So instead of saying the index of this one, of this height one starts at index one, I'm gonna say it starts at index zero because we can extend it all the way back to the zero over here. Next, we're gonna get at index two. We have a five, right? So we'll add that to our stack. The five is greater than the one. So there's no restriction. This one can still be extended. So I'll just add the five and the corresponding index, which is two to the stack. Don't need to pop anything. Next, we get to index three, right? There's a height of six. Again, this six is greater than the, than the value at the top of our stack, which is five. So the heights are in increasing order so far, which is good. That means we don't have to pop anything. And the index we reached the six was at three. That means this five can continue to be extended. That's why we don't have to pop the five. Now we get to index four. This is where the interesting stuff happens. So well, so this at this index four, we have a height two. The problem is this six now can't go any farther. We reached a two. So this six, which started at index three over here, ended up stopping at index four. That means its width was only one. So we have to pop it now, but before we pop it, let's get the area that it could have made. So from in the, so the width is one, the height is six. That means the area it, it could have made is six. This is the max area that this height of six could have uh, created. So we'll update our max area. Six is greater than two. Our max area is now six and let's pop this six from the stack. Okay, now the top of our stack is five, but wait, five is greater than the two as well. That means this five can't be extended any farther. So we look at the start index of this five, it was index two, and we stopped it all the way at index four. So that means its width was two, its height is five. So the area it created was 10. So before we pop it, let's just compute the max area that it could have created. 
it's 10, so we update our max area. Our max area is now 10 greater than six, and we remember to pop this five from our stack. Now we look at the top of the stack, it's one, right? Two is greater than one, so we don't have to pop this one because this one can continue to be extended, so we don't have to pop it, right? And what about the start index do we put for this height of two? Can we put index four? Well, yes, we can, but we notice that we just popped two elements, six and five. That means this two can actually be extended backwards all the way to index two, right? So instead of saying index four is the start value of this two, I'm going to say index two. Next, we reach index five, the last element. So this height is three. Let's put it on our stack. We see three is greater than two. That means we don't have to pop the two from the stack. That means that this two can continue to be extended. There's no need to pop it. And what about the start index of this height three? Well, we can't extend it backwards anymore. So I'm just going to say the start index is five. If you look, we still have three elements left in our stack. So what do we do with them? So we have three elements that we didn't end up popping from the stack. What that tells us is that we were able to, to extend them all the way to the end of the histogram. So we still need to compute the areas we could have created from these heights. So let's iterate through them and figure that out. So let's start at this last one. At index five, it started and it had a height of three. So it started at index five and went all the way to the end of the histogram. So that means the length of it was just one. The height is three, so we can compute the area as having an area of three, right? Now this area of three is not greater than our current max of 10, so we don't update our max. Let's go to the next element in our stack. It's index two, height two. That means it started at index two over here and it went all the way to the end of the histogram and it had a height of two. So that means the width was four, the height was two, two times four is eight. So the area it created was eight. Eight is not greater than our max area either. The max area is 10, so we don't update the max area. The last element in our stack, index zero, height one. That tells us it started all the way back here at index zero, and it, it extended all the way to the end of the histogram. So from zero to the end is a width of six. The height was one, so that means the area it created was six. This six is not greater than our current max area of 10 either. So that means the max area at the end is 10. So that's the result, 10. So with this algorithm, we only had to iterate through the histogram once. We had to push elements onto our stack, but we had to only push each element once and pop it once. So that means the overall time complexity is big O of N. We had to use a stack and the stack could potentially be up to the entire size of the, uh, of the input array. So we did need extra memory. The memory is also going to be big O of N. Okay, now let's write the code. So we know we have to keep track of what the max area currently is. So I'm going to initially say the max area is zero. We also know we have to have a stack. In Python, we can use just a list to do that. And in my stack, I'm gonna hold a pair of elements. The pair of elements is gonna be an index and the height. So now let's iterate through the index and height of this heights array. Before I add it to the stack, I'm gonna say the start index of this current uh, height that we're at is just I because we don't know if we can extend it backwards just yet. So let's now check if our stack is not empty 
And if the stack, if the top value in the stack and the top value's height is greater than the height that we just reached, if that's the case, that means we have to pop our stack, right? We have to pop the height and we have to check the max rectangle we can create from that height and we have to extend the current height that we're at backwards. So now we have to pop from the stack because this height is too great, right? So we're popping, but we have to actually retrieve the values we're popping. So we're popping an index and we're popping the height. And we have to check if this height that we're popping could have been the max area rectangle. We're gonna multiply the height by the width. We can compute the width pretty easily right now. We're at the current index we're at is I, and the index that this height started at was what we just popped index. So I minus index is gonna be the width. And since we know that this height was greater than the current height that we're visiting, that means we can extend our start index backwards to the index that we just popped. Now, when we actually add our element to the stack or add our pair to the stack, we're gonna say, we're gonna add the pair start index and the height that we're visiting right now. We're not just adding I, we're adding the start index that we pushed all the way backwards. And now we remember there still might be some entries in our stack left. So these were uh, able to be extended all the way to the end of the histogram. So we still have to compute their heights. And we can do that pretty easily. So we potentially update our max area. The height is just what's stored in the stack. So height multiplied by the width, we can compute the width pretty easily. We know that these were extended all the way to the end of the histogram. So we can get the length of the histogram subtracted by the start value I that was stored in the stack. And now all we have to do is return our max area. And it works perfectly. I think this is the most intuitive solution, at least from my perspective for this problem. Storing, I think the start index and the height in the stack makes it a little easier.